Hello, 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 hello. I am glad and happy to welcome you to the Airport Safety Channel, your channel of experience, your channel of learning. I am your host, Isaac Otu. It is a real privilege to have you on this channel today. I hope you enjoyed the last presentation and you will definitely enjoy this one. As we started on the previous presentation, we are discussing the airport inspector. We are talking about the airport inspector. And the question still remains, are you ready? Yes, this is the second part of that particular presentation. Are you ready? In the first presentation, let's have a quick review of what we studied. Yes, we discussed about the airport inspector and we focus on what is involved, what is involved in the duties of the airport inspector. We identify that there could be various categories. Either you are from the CAA or you are from the aerodrome operator or you are with other institutions performing the inspectorate job. But basically, our main presentation last week focused on the CAA, inspectors from the CAA. And we discussed the focus of the CAA as being one, verification of aerodrome data. They come in to verify the aerodrome data. Two, inspection of airport facilities. And three, review of the airport operator's internal audit program. In case you've not watched the previous video, I will encourage that you go back and watch that video as it will help you move on faster with this current presentation. So, to start with this week's presentation, I will still ask the question, which category do you fall in? We have already dealt with the Civil Aviation Authority inspectors and now we are looking at the aerodrome operator, inspectors from the aerodrome operators unit. With today's presentation, we'll be looking at the requirement for aerodrome operation when it comes to airport inspections. What are the requirements for aerodrome operations? We will also look at the responsibility for aerodrome inspection, whose responsibility it is. We'll also discuss aerodrome inspection program the type, the content of the inspection program, the inspection frequency and checklist, corrective actions required, and look at the internal audit program and the purpose of the internal audit program. We'll also look, have a short summary and as usual, end with a bullet to carry along with you. So straight into our presentation for today, the question is, Requirements for aerodrome operators. What are the requirements? Now, if you are a certified aerodrome or even an uncertified aerodrome, because some civil aviations require that the aerodrome, even if uncertified, have a level of inspection. To make it clearer, for the CAA, aerodromes may be operated under aerodrome operator certificate or as a non-certificated aerodrome. The type of operations may be conducted and the size of, operate, uh, of aerodrome using the aerodrome may determine the level of certification required. So if you are not certified but you are operating a certain level of aircraft within your airport, you may be required to at least achieve a minimum level of certification. And that will then determine the kind of inspection program that you will have in your aerodrome. But one thing is for sure, the responsibility for aerodrome inspection lies on the aerodrome operator, lies on the aerodrome operator. That is, it is the aerodrome operator's responsibility to ensure that inspections are conducted. Certain parts of the aerodrome may be inspected by the users of that particular, that particular facility, but 
the responsibility still remains with the aerodrome operator to supervise what inspections are being conducted by the third parties. Aerodrome inspection program. While some hazardous aerodrome conditions may develop virtually instantaneously, others are gradual. So there are certain situations that may happen overnight. There are others that may take time to develop. In both cases, it is important to have a comprehensive aerodrome inspection program to ensure that all areas are systematically checked for conformance with established requirements and any deficiencies are identified and effective remedial action is taken before small defects develop into significant hazards. And if you have an inspection program, it will help you pick things that occur overnight and even items that develop with time. So ask yourself, how many times have you been caught off guard? on situations that you could have nipped in the bud, You need an effective aerodrome inspection program to avoid such occurrences catching you by surprise. So that brings us to the types of inspections. Because like I mentioned, some situations occur instantaneously, others gradually. Therefore, there are different types of inspection aimed at catching or identifying different types of problems. Typically, an aerodrome inspection program may be continuous surveillance, continuous surveillance, for example, aerodrome activities like vehicles on operational areas, passengers on the apron, fueling operations, wildlife construction and debris could be surveyed continuously because you always have to monitor issues from those areas can happen overnight you have to consist continuously monitor these things to identify anything that may occur in your blind side also you could have regular inspections for physical facilities for example the paved and unpaved movement areas runway and taxiway strips, markings and signs and lightings. These things must be inspected at a regular interval. So you must have fixed period for inspecting them. Markings are consistently being used. So you must inspect them regularly at fixed period to monitor their effectiveness to serve their purpose. It is important to know which items need regular inspections and which items need continuous surveillance, continuous surveillance. There are other forms of inspections that we may discuss should we have other platforms as we go along. So what should be involved or what should be the content of your inspection program? Primarily, your attention should be given to such operational items such as pavement areas, these eye areas should be checked regularly and consistently. Your markings and your signs, you must always make sure they are available to serve the purpose for which they were installed or marked. Your fueling operations, as long as you have fueling operations, you have hydrants, you have bowsers operating in your aerodrome, you need to regularly have a means of inspecting their performance ground vehicles, ground vehicles of ground handlers, of the airport operator, of third party operators in the airport needs to be monitored. Emergency management plans of the airport needs to be tested at regular intervals in order to ensure that it will work when it is required. Public protection, public protection, construction, safety areas, lighting, navigational aids, rescue firefighting, obstructions in and around the aerodrome, wildlife hazard management within the aerodrome and beyond the aerodrome borders. All these things need to be regularly monitored, regularly inspected, and it is the responsibility 
of the aerodrome operator to ensure that these inspections are conducted and completed with the right actions taken to ensure that they will be able to perform or available when required. A single inspection sheet may capture groups of these items. For example, you can add pavement and markings and maybe a lighting on one form. But you may need a single form for, uh, for monitoring emergency management plans or even for monitoring wildlife hazard activities. So depending on the size of your aerodrome and the volume of work required in one particular area, you may have variety of forms for each item or a single form capturing a variety of items on that particular form. Inspection frequency. The frequency of inspection should be determined by identifying the areas of, uh, critical to the ongoing safety of aircraft operations, taking into account factors including frequency of operations and then the duration of operation. So the frequency of operation and the duration should advise the airport operator in whether they are going to maintain continuous surveillance or they are going to maintain regular inspections or establish a better means of monitoring that particular activity. The reasons for establishing the frequency of inspection should be documented. The reason why you are deciding to inspect something at a, a, a particular pace should be uh, documented and submitted to support the content of the expositions that address the Certificate Holders Safety Inspection Program or Self-Inspection Program. So you need to inform your CA why you have decided to inspect at a certain pace or why you have decided to uh, 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 limit the frequency of inspection for certain items. The CA needs to approve this particular decision. Every inspection must be conducted with an inspection checklist. For even the smallest aerodrome, it is desirable to use an aerodrome inspection checklist. This is also a matter of human factors because if one person develops a skill in inspecting and stops using the form, it's likely to pass that culture or that habit down to the people who are going to pick from him. Some may now sort and decide what is important or what is not and choose what they will also inspect or not inspect. But when you have a form or an inspection checklist, it provides for a record of all items inspected. The checklist enables the person conducting the check to know that yes, I have checked this or I have missed this item and then they can fill up all the gaps and can be used as a check to ensure follow-up actions have been taken. Because the checklist allows you to put in your comments, it also gives you reminder to follow up on items you might have observed that may still be pending. So checklists are very important. Any inspection conducted without a completed checklist is virtually a che an inspection not conducted. So when you conduct a detailed inspection, you must use a checklist and then record your inspection observations on your checklist. So like I mentioned, the use of the checklist should be able to lead you to reporting your deficiencies for corrective action to be taken. An effective aerodrome inspection program requires a procedure for the reporting of deficiencies to the responsible person so that they can be corrected. Some deficiencies need corrections instantly and therefore it should be able or one, the inspector should be able to report immediately to tower or request for a notam or send for the engineers to quickly come and resolve these issues. 
depending on the deficiency identified, a, 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 a matching level of response need to be provided to meet that deficiency observed. The shadowed use of a data checklist will ensure the regularity and thoroughness of safety inspections and follow-up of deficient items. Use of checklist, conduct of inspections must end with an action for corrective action to be taken. Remember to put your comments in and also share this link with your friends and your colleagues. And I believe that by the close of this month, we should be hitting a target of not less than 500 subscribers to this channel. So play your part as we continue to learn on this platform. We will move on to the internal audit process. Now, a step beyond inspection is internal audit process. The audit process is a step beyond the inspection. So you have inspected, you have identified the gap, you have submitted for corrective actions to be taken. How do we know that you are still compliant? That is when we introduce internal audit process. Internal audit process. It helps to know that you are, the way you see yourself is, one, is who you truly are. The internal audit process provides factual information that allows management to make appropriate decisions in accordance with the aerodrome manual. And then this internal audit should be able to determine the compliance or non-compliance of the audit elements with specified requirements. And determine the effectiveness of the implemented standards in meeting the specified objectives. Now bullet A and bullet B also summarizes or gives a clear difference between an inspection and an audit. It gives a clear difference between an inspection and an audit in that the difference between the audit and the inspection from my perspective perspective is that the inspection is to find out what has been provided and confirm its current state example the number of light fittings and how many are working or serviceable that is what the inspection is searching for. So if the inspection re realizes or uh, discovers failed uh, fittings, the report for it to be replaced, they are done. However, the audit is focused on whether the facilities provided are in compliance. The facilities provided are in compliance with the standard based on the level of the airport's operation. Example, if the fittings provided meet the requirement of the approach category, and if the serviceability meets compliance requirements, not the number of fittings present. So for the inspection, two fittings may be unserviceable and they will just submit a request for correction but for the audit two fittings consecutively standing together which are unserviceable are non-compliant the impact of that non-compliance is higher than two fittings that are at different locations which may be unserviceable so audit takes the inspection uh, to another level in terms of compliance. Based on the category of operation and the gaps existing in the compliance status of the airport, the frequency of the audit must be sufficient to ensure that existing deviations are corrected and new ones are captured and resolved before they develop fully. The program, which is the internal audit program, will help to plan and identify sufficiently qualified individuals to conduct the audit. 
to conduct the audit because the people responsible for the audit are not the ones who perform the day-to-day -day duties. They are independent of the job itself. They are independent of the operational activity, but they are trained to understand the compliance requirements of that activity. Therefore, if you use someone who is performing or who is responsible for performing the activity to also conduct the audit, they are certainly going to introduce their own biases. But if you use a person who is trained to understand the compliance requirement and yet who is separated from the operational duty, that person is likely to audit to the expected level of the compliance needs. In summary, by complying with the prescribed standards and procedures of the CA, and by taking a proactive safety management approach in the operation of the aerodromes, aerodrome operators can demonstrate that they have discharged their safety obligations to the traveling public. Aerodrome safety is a vital link in aviation safety. It is achieved by providing appropriate aerodrome services, facilities and equipment and maintaining them and the aerodrome environment to a level of safe aircraft operations. The only way to achieve this is to consistently monitor the performance of the facilities, equipment and services provided through inspections and internal audits. This is very important for aerodrome safety. Our bullet for today is that airport inspectors are personnel trained to perform and inspect an airport activity. And internal auditors are personnel who are not directly responsible for the performance of the action but trained in auditing the activity trained in auditing the activity that is a clear difference between who the airport inspector is and who the internal auditor is thanks for watching i'm grateful that you have spent these few minutes with me and i believe that we have learned something new today and refresh our memories on what we already know please post your comments and questions and subscribe and click the bell share with one and all and i believe that together we will be working to make our airports safer thank you and enjoy the week and share with as many people as possible.